Hey, welcome to Guitar Knobs, the guitars, gear, noise, and nonsense podcast hosted today by these knobs. Tony Dudzik, Pick Guardian. Rob Chafe, Madco Information. Rob's actually here. He's back. He's back in the saddle. Yes, he's. Hello. But it looks like he actually has more amps at his shop. I was there the other day. And oh, it's it was, nuts. It was remarkable. Hey, everybody. It's me, Ty Novak. Welcome to the Guitar Notes Podcast. We're thrilled to death that you are listening <laughs> to our show. We have a really good one. We have some of the, the, the biggest brains and brightest minds and uh, handsomest gents in the business on the other line. Guys, who are you? We are Maris, Terry and Angelo. <laughs> Terry Burton and Angelo are you sure? Mazzucco. <laughs> yes. Good. Completely sure. Yeah, excellent. Uh, Maris is here with us tonight. We're really excited about this. Uh, they have some amazing pedals that they've uh, sent us to uh, get familiar with. We're going to be talking about those and just getting to know these guys a little bit more, getting to know what Maris is about and, um, you know, trying to make a connection between the builders and the gear for all of you listeners out there. Uh, we sounds amazing. We're happy to be here. Perfect. Perfect. Um, so... Tony, did you have anything uh, to announce or anything like that? No, but I do have something in my guitar world this week. Oh, well, that's good. We're going to get to that. Yes, I knew Rob? it. Rob? I knew it. No. Nothing. Nothing. Okay, that's okay. Um, we're going to ask him. We're just going to we're just going to go. All right. I, we don't true. have any major announcements, so we're just going to go. No. Um, no, let's all, find all, out. All is, all is well now that Paul has his bass back. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I had my fun with that last week. Uh why don't we get into what's going on in our music world this week? We're yes. going to start out with Tanya Bolonsky, yes. the Polish princess of Youngstown. <laughs> Go ahead. And, and then we'll check in with Terry and Angelo. You're, you're neglecting my kabasi eating contest winning. Well, you know, for five you years. can only gloat so much about that. Okay. All right. Well, you know, this week um, I happened to catch a couple of uh, posts um, on Instagram from our good friend Liam Martin at Bill Gola Guitars. Ah, uh, yes. Bill Gola Guitars, you yeah, might remember. He's doing some fun stuff. Well, here I, I just wanted to point out, and I think anybody that's listening should head over and check out some of the stuff that he's doing. And this is this one really struck me as cool because he's he was building a, um, a Bigsby, Paul Bigsby style guitar. And he needed a sh- what we call a shorty Bigsby, mm-hmm. um, and a lot of people Isn't that, that your nickname, yeah, shorty oh, Bigsby, yeah. <laughs> as opposed to long tall Bigsby, yeah. Um, and one of the things uh, on a guitar like this, and sometimes even on Telecasters, is uh, a lot of players like to use the shorty Bigsby, which is just really the it's a shortened version of of like a B five or anything like that. And in fact, what a lot of people do is they take this. Uh, Are you B- just talking about the arm is shorter, or the whole thing is well, shorter? Well, the the whole the base that uh, that connects uh, okay. where the arm is connected to is yes. shorter than like a standard B five or a B seven. And uh, Bigsby actually in makes still makes uh, a, a version uh, for Telecasters that is this. It's just it's way over the top. It's got this piece plus a part that goes over. Uh, and covers what would be the bridge area on a Telecaster. Yeah. And then you have to use like a Jaguar or Mustang bridge with it. Right. Um, So what a lot of players do is they take that piece, which is stupid expensive, chop off the parts that would cover up, you know, the bridge area and things, and they just use this short piece. Well, Liam decided that he was going to take that a step further for this particular project. And actually CNC... The mm. short tailpiece out of a, a a block of aluminum. Yeah, and instead of it saying Bigsby, it says Bill Gola. Gola. Yeah, and I mean he's he there must be a half dozen or more posts of him in yeah. various stages. It's been of a it. process. It is absolutely beautiful. He did yeah. a fantastic job, and you know that's like going the extra five hundred miles. Yeah. Uh, Beyond just you know taking something, converting it, chopping it up. I mean, yeah. I mean, he, he would really cool. He would have saved a lot of money by just buying a Bigsby Telly well, B sixteen. If he's if he's you know really good at CNC. Well, I mean it, but it looks great, and and so I'm I'm just gonna give him a tip of the old chapeau. Yes, excellent. 
I like that. Uh, let's start with uh, Terry over at Maris. What's going on in your music world this week? Oh, well, let's see. I always like to have kind of a, um, like a little, it's fun to have a little project going to keep you motivated or keep you excited about music stuff. So I got the silly idea that I've been thrown back and forth with Angelo for a couple months now to build like a uh, 80s kind of super strat from, uh, from, from uh, kind of not really from scratch, but but I want a bunch of weird combinations of things. So that's, that's what I'm working on right now. Nice. I have a silly idea of a reverse, reverse strat headstock, 70s style. Oh, cool. Um, and then kind of like a relic body with some goofy pickup combinations. And I'm still debating whether I want to go all the way and do Floyd Rose and all that silly stuff or not. Whoa. What, what pickups are you considering? Oh, you guys are going to laugh at me. It's going to be dorky. It's going to be like a, um, <laughs> a DiMarzio fast track two. Okay. And, uh, and then something in the neck that I'm not sure yet, maybe something hum canceling, like another DiMarzio area 51. Yeah. That'd be cool. I mean, what I, I've got, I've got like, I've got a bunch of guitars with, um, with Seymour Duncan stuff already. So it's, uh, it's like, I want, I want to do some DiMarzio stuff. No, yeah, that's cool. I mean, a lot of I, I do a lot of projects, uh, pick card projects for people that, like, in some cases they want to do like the Jakey e. Lee style that has, you know, a humbucker and mm. then two reverse slanted. Um, exactly, uh, I want reverse pickup. slanted. Yeah, I need your help. Oh, okay, easy yeah. peasy. I want reverse slanted. That's what I want. All right. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll talk after the uh, after the podcast and hook up and we'll just uh, figure out what you need. Perfect. Like it. Look at that. Connections cool. happening. Uh, Angela, how about Worlds you? are colliding. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I have a B16 telly, and I love it. So it's kind of impressive that this guy went the extra mile to chop that up. Yeah. But I actually sought out a Telecaster with a B16 on it just because I love the way it looks. I love the extra, it's a big, I don't know, it's lots of metal. Like a Cadillac piece. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's enormous. Is that the one but of the demos? What's great... Uh, it is in some of the demos. Yeah, okay. we I, I play that in a couple of the yeah. It's it's a cheap guitar. I, I this this guy in San Francisco put it together out of like parts. He has a bike shop and he was just it's a parts Telecaster. Um, but I sought it out because it had a real B B sixteen, which I was super excited about. But yeah, so I've had that a while. And then, but I guess late like like kind of things I'm looking at lately is um, at uh, Nam time. I became aware of this guy named Rick Toon. Have you guys heard about this guy? Uh, he's a big fan of Ned Steinberger, so Rick Toon oh. guitars. And this guy does really clever stuff, and he has this neat uh, Strat replacement tremolo that inside of it has a camshaft. So all of your notes, uh, all your strings, are bending at different rates when you use a tremolo arm. And Whoa. so your chords stay in tune. So it's it's kind of something like Ned Steinberger did with the trans trem, but this is kind of all built into a regular drop-in strat replacement uh, tremolo. And he's got a bunch machined up, but he's at Namtom was looking for someone to manufacture them. He doesn't have manufacturing sorted out. But anyways, I thought that was a really kind of clever thing to have the entire kind of transposing tremolo built into a strat bridge. So I've that been kind of wild. fascinated with that. <laughs> yeah. That is wild. Yeah, pretty got cool guy. a lot of time to think about that. A lot, yeah, that hurt my head. <laughs> Holy moly. Uh, Rob, how about yourself? Uh, music week. Music week. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm not prepared. Uh, well, I think I settled on a uh, preamp boost pedal for, you know, that I've been going around and around with different yeah. Klon clones. Not a Klon. Like not, not, not. The not a clon pedal, but it's not a clon. Um, and I, I've landed on the uh, GHS haunting mids. Yeah, kind of wow. completely sidestep. You got me kind of turned on. To, I wanted to check it out too. Yeah, I just got it kind of on a whim, and I was like, well, let's just see, because I've tried just about every other pedal I can think of, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, that, I, so far it's two gigs and it's working great. So exactly what oh. I wanted, just a nice buffer, and I can just dial in. If those not familiar, it's literally a volume a mid um, cut or boost and then a frequency select like a sweep sweep yeah, yeah there you go um, yeah, so nice. you just pick which which frequency you want to boost just a touch or cut just a touch and and how much level boost to push the front end and 
Yeah. So they a, so they don't bill that as a, like a, a clon. No, not at all. So it's just, all. it's more like a parametric EQ. It, it is a it's single, not a clon. Exactly. Yeah. It's not a clon. <laughs> that's not a clon. Okay. It, no, it, it is. It's just that haunting me. It's just a single frequency booster cut, and mm-hmm. yeah, that's it. Like one yeah. one band EQ. Yes. Okay. So, but yeah. it's it's well, it's something it, else. But you said it's mid, so I thought it has a it has a mid sweep. So it, it does. Okay, so it's just the mids. Just the mids. I don't know exactly. Not a single band. What the? Well, that would be a one band. How? Oh, all right. I got yeah. you. I got how you. How haunted are they? Uh, it depends on how haunted you want them to be. It's got a knob <laughs> for that. <laughs> but I, at first, I thought it was kind of a joke pedal. Yeah. And then I plugged it in. and went, oh. Yeah, I get it. That's what it does. How about that? It's actually well, that's really their useful. Next pedal. It's called not a joke. Not a joke. Yeah. yeah. So, now, uh, are you using <laughs> um, uh, single coil pickups primarily or humbuckers? Both. Both. Okay. Both and everything in between. Actual single coil, stack single coils. Um, uh, what's the uh, parallel single coil? So it's hum canceling, but they're parallel, like a humbucker and parallel single. I guess what what the wiring would be. Did oh, you follow that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. <something. laughs> You t- rather than put the the if you take a humbucker and you wire the oh coils, you wire okay in in yeah. series versus parallel right 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 okay and just not not just kill a coil but you yeah, yeah you yeah. reduce it by half yeah well yeah yeah I mean it's like it's like a speaker series yeah. and parallel wiring no math guys <laughs> sorry fifty <laughs> percent no math zone let's start using percentages yeah. and yeah. really get Todd that's, going that's 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 a terribly exciting story Rob yeah. um how about <laughs> thanks Todd. how about me. Nah, nah, <laughs> nah we're, we'll just nah. skip right over that. Nah, let's, so let's go to uh, yeah, now. For, for for my week, uh, I called Billy, who uh, Billy was a uh, former, uh, uh, sometime co-host. Yes, and uh, f- great friend of ours. And um, I said, uh, "Hey, remember that uh, telly that I brought in? I brought in a, a '97 uh, made in Mexico uh, telly, a Squire telly that is tide pool blue, and it just." It's a great telly. And he said, let me see that. And I, it was in his hands for like 30 seconds. He goes, dude, sell this to me right now. And I said, not yet, not yet. I'm, I have, I think I have an idea what I want to do for this. Well, the idea is that I'm going to sell it to him. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, I got to fund another guitar project. And uh, I've got a couple, I don't need another telly right now. So, Do you have a home equity line? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, anyhow, so your wife will never know. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, the whole, that's the whole thing. I, you, you guys, everybody knows. You know how you got to do that. You got to oh, yeah. keep it circulating. Yeah, just uh, yeah, yeah. It's always fun to do that, and it's going into like I know he loves this thing. Like uh, yeah. right out of the gate, he fell in love with it. So that's good. I don't have to hawk it, you know, on Craigslist or something like that. That's nice. That's worth it. Right yeah, there. for sure. Anyways, you uh, know what goes good with Craigslist? Um. No, Tony. Alcohol. Tour no, gear, no, no. De- tour gear design patch cables. Oh my gosh, that's right. If you have a Craigslist, the best way to connect your Craigslist or your pedals, <laughs> even, is through Tour Gear Designs patch cables. That's right. All the different sizes, and they're flat, and they're flat, and like they a crepe. S- such a low profile jack. It's crazy. It's minuscule. It is. And if you go to tourgeardesigns.com and load up your cart, because you're gonna want, you're gonna say, wait, I need all of these sizes. You're gonna get fifteen percent off, an your, extra, an extra fifteen percent. But what do you have to put in? You have to put in the guitar knobs in the coupon area. Yes, coupon code. Yes, you, you will be happy, happy, and your your pedal board will love you. And uh, we want to say thank you to Tour Gear Designs for sponsoring our four on the floor, Tony. Let me get a little bit of this. You're supposed to back away from the mic when you do that. Well, My I did. God. One, two, one, two, three, four on the floor. All right, Angelo and Terry uh, from Maris. Why don't you tell us your four on the floor? Yes. Um, so the four on the floor that I've had for a long time. Um, I, I, and they're literally on the floor of my studio. <laughs> uh, I feel like well, with pedals, um, mating them to an amp is kind of the most critical thing. Mm. Um, I play Fender Deluxe, and um, I play it uh, not on the treble channel. I play it on the rhythm channel. Uh, and so giving some kind of dimension to that is kind of what I'm after. The first pedal that is on the floor uh, 
is a compressor. So I have an old Keeley four knob compressor. Mm. Um, and I'm not using that as a clean boost. I'm using it to set, it's almost like a limiter. I'll use it to set the gain going into the drive pedals. Um, and the reason I like that is it kind of um, takes, uh, it takes kind of the, the swing, I don't know, of, of, the, of the drive pedal. You can kind of focus it in on just like the sweet spot of the distortion curve. So right where the clipping is cut, you know, coming in, uh, I'll use the compressor to just focus the sound on that. Oh. Uh, so uh, I, I'm yeah, kind of using it as a limiter. So number two is the Way Huge Fat Sandwich. So oh. Terry and I were lucky to work with George Tripps at Line 6. And uh, this is one of George Tripps' creations, the Fat Sandwich. And it's, uh, I, I have two and one sounds way better than the other. Huh. But they're very complicated. <laughs> it's a Red Llama and a Tube Screamer in series in one pedal. And uh, what's really nice about it is it just works really well with the Keeley compressor. <laughs> Those two are on together. Uh, but it, it's, it's kind of a, a making your Fender kind of a marshall when you want to. Uh, it, it's a really great liquid lead sound and uh, it has internal pots. So I have everything set. I never change the knobs on it. And I either get a rhythm or a lead tone by punching in the Keeley compressor on or off. And oh, so that's there you go. how I kind of moderate the sound. Yeah. Um, but it's not one of his uh, better known pedals. I don't think a lot of people. No, when you that. said that, and I was like, question it. mark head mm -hmm. in my brain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Most people do. It's uh, it's he made a gold one and a black one and it's the fat sandwich. What and it sounds really great with the deluxe. Um, but I brought it into the office and I've had mixed results with other amps where it just doesn't, you know, work mm. as well. But for some reason that combo is just, you know, kind of, and it's, I've been using that together for maybe 10 years. It's just a real kind of a mainstay. Um, so that's number two. Okay. Uh, and, uh, int right after that. So it's never on at the same time as the, as the fat sandwich. I have, a the uh, classic 108, the BC 108 Fuzz oh, yeah. MXR. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a great compact uh, fuzz face in you know pedal board form factor. It's not the big round yeah. <laughs> fuzz face that is impossible to build a pedal board around. Yeah, and uh, but it's really an interesting kind of match. So I get a whole bunch of tones. You know, all all the pedals off, just compressor on, it's clean boost. Uh, fat sandwich uh, on with nothing else on rhythm. I can boost in the uh, Keeley lead tone, and then it's the fuzz face, you know. So that that kind of lives on its own, and uh, it's it's a pretty consistent one. Uh, I know I, I have maybe six or seven different fuzz faces, uh -huh. and they all feel different. But this is a good one. Isn't that I, I, weird? And, and I mean, all they the all are completely <laughs> <laughs> for having like yeah two components. Well, maybe a little bit more, but. It's crazy. No, it's close to that. Yeah, they're just wide open. They're just reacting to whatever pickups you're using. No buffering. It's just just like a direct connection to the output of your guitar. So it kind of everything matters. Your volume, your tone, everything yeah. matters to a fuzz face. Well, speaking of the volume, one of the things that I've run into, um, I, like I recently picked up for the very same purpose that we're talking about just to com just for compare and contrast against some of the other ones i have i got the the full tone uh blue which is the the this one the classic 108 and um the uh the volume on it was like i had it pegged and i it it barely barely was hitting hmm. uh my my brain just blanked out on the couldn't get back up to Unity. No, Unity, thank you very much. Uh, couldn't hit Unity gain. I was like, it. I was like, why is this so low? And then I've tried a couple others, and I feel like maybe that's just the pedal, and I'm not totally aware that it just has low volume. Is your trim pot inside? Hmm. No, no. Hmm. Mm, that's funky. Should, yeah, no, I don't. I don't. The I don't do it with the BC 108 pedal. I have it that doesn't. Doesn't. That's doesn't, not a problem. It's not. A, it's not a characteristic of 108s. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's, Let's funky. check that out. Yeah, you should reach out to Michael Fuller. Yeah, here he's a great guy to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's back. Yes. Yeah, he, mm, yeah, sorta. <laughs> he's uh, 
Sort of. They, sort of back. The comeback king. Um, okay, so... Um, uh, four. Four. Yes, four. So that's I, three. So number four uh, is... Uh, so I'm using our paddles a lot, but, but what I really love are memory mans uh, and mm. kind of a, a good, easy pedal board friendly memory man is the carbon copy mm -hmm. and the carbon copy yes. has a speed and depth trim pot inside so i can get the modulation right where i want and it's just kind of an easy thing it's another set and forget like i never change the settings on any of these um but that's as far as super compact memory man uh vibes like i don't know the carbon copy is really easy to use yep that's been on the uh on the list for actually when we did about when we i think we had just hit like 350 uh actual um well i guess it would have been 350 episodes but it wasn't because it was way earlier no we had 350 pedals at that point in time mm. spread across so it was it was early on in like our early hundreds Episode i think or something, yeah. and i was cataloging everything and i was i did a <laughs> blog and it just took so much so much work and then we said oh let's break this down and see what the most popular pedal is and what the most you know of each category of pedal i, I apparently i had a little extra time a lot too of time. yeah and i came up with this really <laughs> killer tremolo system for my um for the strat and uh no <laughs> <laughs> um amazing yeah but that's been on like you know loads of times because it's a great pedal and mm -hmm. yeah so but yeah it's always it's fun super trustworthy it. another uh uh george trips fueled creation uh he uh after line six he went to dunlop where dunlop makes all the way huge pedals but he also was the designer uh product designer on that on that pedal the no, carbon i didn't know that, that. Yeah. that's cool look yeah. at what we yeah. learned I love it. Yeah, no, George. Yeah, he's he runs Way Huge and he designs all his Way Huge pedals, but he's also a critical product designer at MXR. So he kind of, you know, guides things along in a lot of the products that, uh, you know, sometimes you don't know, but it's he he works on a ton of stuff over there. That's cool. That's super cool. You know, you mentioned the Memory Man. Um, we at one point in time we were trying to we had connected with. And, you know, I'll forgive me, I forget the guy's name, but um, we connected with the gentleman that basically laid out the memory man, the electric mistress, the, oh, uh, you know. For, oh, is that Huey, uh, Mick, is it, uh, oh man, is it Mick his name? I he sounded like, he literally sounded like Mick from Rocky. <laughs> Like it was, it was, uh, I think it was, it's, I think it's how, I think his name is Howie McDavis. I don't know. It was very, I'm, I'm something along those know. lines. Yeah. Yeah. And he was like calling, he's like calling from Brooklyn and, and it, it didn't work. He couldn't yeah. figure out how to get the stuff. And he was like, I'm trying to get this stuff working. I was like, well, this, is, <laughs> this is not going to go well. Just try him again, you know, a couple years later. Yeah. yeah. I went out and bought a Bluetooth microphone. <laughs> right, exactly. Got a new computer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, computers, I don't know. Anyways, uh, Terry, let's let's check in with you. What's your four on the floor? Uh, I, I really want to hear that episode that you were just talking well, about. Well, we can do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole thing. You couldn't get it to well, work. We had lots of technical you difficulties. Gotta, it was rough, yeah. You got to redo it. You got to redo I it. I got to try it. Maybe um, I can just fake it. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> the lawsuit. Yeah. So my, let's see. Let's see. Well, my rig right now that I'm, I'm using with the band is, uh, I have a band that nobody knows about, uh, but. Um, What's your band name? It's. The uh, band is called the June Echo. We never play shows, but we had, do have some recordings out there. Now, three um, people know about your band. <laughs> all right, awesome, awesome, awesome. That's perfect. That's perfect for us. Um, but I'm always playing through uh, I, my favorite kind of uh, Marshall head right now is like a JCM 800. Nice. Uh, mm -hmm. Kit that I built. So my pedal, my pedal rig right now is just two pedals. And I know I'm not supposed to use our pedal, but I have to just for a second because it's an L, it's an LVX and then a Chase Bliss preamp Mark II, and those two work really well together. But I'll replace the delay later. So, so number one will be Chase Bliss preamp Mark II, which is awesome, really versatile, um, and just looks super cool when you change presets too because the sliders move around. No, I'm um, I'm not familiar with that. Is it like a three band EQ preamp or? I'll pull it so up. that's like uh, him and uh, Chris Benson worked on this. Uh, it's like a drive. It's like a it's like a um, drive mm. and EQ and one. 
Um, but it's just, um, it, it does like, you know, drive and fuzz. I mostly use the drive part of it. Uh, it's got some diode selections on there and stuff, but you it rock, sounds you great. Never it sounds saw fantastic. That? It was like I, I th- it's impossible a, not to see it, for like it, it's six a, months. It's got automated faders, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think I remember seeing a drop yeah. and they were making the faders bounce and I was like, oh, all right. Yeah. Yeah, so okay. we, we ended up working with, so Joel's a friend of ours. We ended up working on a reverb version uh, with that on that platform too, um, with the moving faders. So that one's, uh, that one's um, fun. But, okay, so number one pedal, pre Mark II, and number two pedal, I have been on a chorus hunt for a long time. Angelo knows this, but um, I settled pretty recently in the last few years on the small clone. Oh. I love that one for, for chorus. Um, and not a lot of people use it. I see threads all the time about like, oh, what's the best chorus pedal? What's the best chorus pedal? People are mentioning boss all the time. I, and I think those are good. And I have a lot of those, but man, this, the small clone is, is great sounding. Um, I love that one. I kind of, for modulation, I kind of go back and forth between that and the ADA flanger, but, mm. um, small clone right now. Yeah. You know what? I, I actually really love that you have an LVX and a small clone, like, hanging out together that's pretty cool <laughs> two extremes <laughs> that is really cool <laughs> and then um let's see number three oh uh, uh empress heavy if i need like metal sounds this is another one i don't see a lot of people using that one but it's really really good for for metal sounds um kind of more sophisticated sounding than a, than a metal zone but really aggressive like that mm. That's got a lot of knobs. Um, yeah, I'll say. It does. It does. It does. Um, and I, they have a smaller version in now, but I, I don't have that one. Steve's another Holy buddy of ours. Man. Ten knobs, uh, we just, we just had switches, switches, and four toggles. Yeah. <laughs> it's smaller than it seems. It's not that big in person. Um, but uh, we just had Korean food with Steve. That was awesome. And uh, last month delicious in LA. <laughs> uh, and then the last one for the, I'm actually not using this delay right now, but I did for years. Um, uh, line six echo park. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yep. So, and which Angelo actually, uh, wrote all the algorithms in that too. I think that personally, I think it sounds better than the DL four. So I like it better. Hmm. Um, uh, but DL four is way more popular. Um, but I used that for years and years and years until we, um, until, uh, even during the Strymon days when I was at Strymon, I still use the, still use the Echo Park a lot, but obviously I had some timeline and, and, uh, stuff on my board. But now that we have LVX and Polymoon, I use those all the time. Those things are built like tanks. Yeah. yeah they, they weigh as much as a tank too. They're, they're <laughs> literally heavy. Depending on which ones you get, the original ones uh, were zinc and were cast in a, um, like a matchbox, like ma- the toy matchbox cars, mm-hmm. that factory, they were cast alongside no the cars kidding. Oh, that's and good. yeah. And so they, they were a boss pedal will, will weigh one pound. Uh, the original, like first five months of the tone cores weighed, weighed two mount, two pounds, twice as much as a boss pedal. Wow. Mm. Um, yeah, they were. If you had a pedal board full of tone corner pedals, it was a heavy mm-hmm. pedal board. But then they switched. They switched um, after the fifth month to aluminum, and lost a whole pound. Oh, <laughs> it looks Mine like was if, heavy. Had had if Robocop had to have a deodorant, if they were if they were cast <laughs> in England, they would be made of aluminium. Yeah. Yes, sadly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't think I, I wasn't I wasn't the biggest fan of the industrial design, but the um, but. The pedal sounded awesome. I actually took my, all the guts out of mine and put it in a put it in a, a different box, and rehoused it. Huh. Hmm. Uh, like a fuzz face? Mostly or? not. <laughs> yeah. Not for the not for the, look, not for the look. Not for the look. Just, just I wanted to add true bypass. So that's cool. Neato. Well, you guys yeah. are the, the the ones to be doing that stuff. Um, thank you for your. Uh, eight on the floor. That was yes. really cool. Uh, I th- that was surprising. I think I'm surprised by some yeah. of the things you had, and we got some new stuff. We always love getting new stuff, learning about new pedals, and why people like it. And uh, the other thing uh, is, uh, you should do four four in the rack. <laughs> four in the rack. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if you guys talk to anyone who uses rack processors, but I have a whole bunch. 
So it, I could have yeah, different We don't answers. run into that all that much. I got to be no, honest. No, nobody. No. Yeah. If only it's, we were doing the podcast in the 80s. Yeah. Yeah, 1988. <laughs> yes. yeah. Um, although the owner of the studio that we're in, when I said, hey, we're doing Maris, he's like, oh, dude, the, the preamp, the preamp. Uh, he was like freaking out that we were talking to you guys about. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. He, he, so he's like, oh, I need to get all of this stuff. He wanted me to ask if you're going to make a compressor. Oh, I'd love to make a compressor, but um, we just never, we never got around to it. I think I, both of us love compressors. Uh, LVX and Mercury X have compressors built. Ah, uh, yes. Like, <laughs> correction. Uh, so they but not, not, well, technically, not, not in the 500 compressors. series format. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, I'll have the, to. Uh, yeah, not in, not in, not in, <laughs> not, in the, not in the pro audio land. We haven't made. Yeah. And, and Enzo also has a compressor. We also have a compressor in Enzo. I'll tell him uh, to get dry those compressors. Mode. Enzo has, yeah. <laughs> well, it's not for him. He wants a 500 series stuff. So yes, yes. The answer to that question is, yeah, we're, we're, that's not on the horizon. But yes. we have lots of, lots of compressors. Yes, indeed. Well, he's he's extremely impressed, and uh, he's shopping those ones around. So um, that's I will cool. let him know. Yeah, oh, that's it's great awesome. to hear. Uh, all right. Well, much awaited. We are going to talk to you guys about some cool stuff. Uh, we, you know, when when I contacted uh, these guys and said, you know, I, we want to share who they are and and connect people. That's what we do on the show with the products that people are interested in and or already love with the people that are making them. And um, I, I thought. You know, I know that you guys have have done several interviews and, and loads of stuff is out there. So I'm, I'm not I don't want to spend a ton of time rehashing things that you've probably already answered a million times. And we're going to try as hard as we can not to do that um, while still shedding some light on what's going on. Um, but I thought it would be kind of fun. Uh, I don't know how often you guys do this, but um, I would love for uh, Terry, if you could just tell us a bit about Angelo. Oh, do opposite. All right, cool. Uh, I uh, met Angelo at line six. Um, we both, st he started a little before me, right around the year 2000. I think Angelo started in 99, but a long time ago now. Um, uh, we were both pretty young. I liked him right away because we both loved um, this comedy show called Mr. Show. Oh, yeah. And so we would talk mm -hmm. about that from the nineties. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we would talk about music stuff, guitar stuff. He knows like pretty much more about, uh, guitar. Um, if I want to talk to him about guitar parts or tremolos or something like that, he knows more than anybody I've ever met. Um, yeah, super nice dude all the time. Um, brilliant, good taste. Um, Let's see. At Line 6, we did not work on a ton of projects together, but, uh, yeah, we were always just, always just friends hanging out there and um, talking about stuff. And uh, we did work on a series of uh, little small amplifiers together. That was a fun project at Line 6. And, uh, yeah, where do I go from there? What's his, what's his favorite junk food to eat? <laughs> Uh, this, this guy eats healthy. I don't, I don't not, not much junk food. He's Italian. So, uh, it's hard to, it's hard to, uh, it's hard to find Italian food that he's happy with. I will say that. <laughs> That's fair. That's um, fair. um, yeah. What's not, his not favorite movie? Food, I don't think. Oh, that's a good question. Um, I'm totally blanking on it, uh, but, oh, I know what it is. He doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't do, uh, he doesn't do favorites. A lot. Okay. Like, like, okay. Kind of shies, kind of shies away from favorites. Maybe, uh, but uh, if it's Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Oh, <laughs> love it, love it, love it. That's great. That's great. Uh, let's see, Angelo, your turn. Tell us about Terry. Well, yeah, like Terry said, we met at Line Six uh, right away. Yeah, we connected on humor, and uh, Terry is always. Uh, you know, he's uh, super sharp, brilliant, and funny, and so it was an easy connection. <laughs> it was always fun to pop in and see what Terry was working on and kind of laugh about stuff and connect on shows. And so we, we hit it off right away. And um, I think what's unique about Terry is that when he works on something, 
there's always a little spin, like a little something like clever and extra. And it's like, oh my God, that's such a good idea. So no matter um, what he is working on, it's always such an extremely thoughtful design. So, you know, when you're playing through our electronics, you can be sure that he's sweated through all of the analog signal path. (laughs) (laughs) And yeah, just always, always really, really, um, really, really clever and smart and uh, brilliant designs. So, um, you know, when when he uh, approached me about working at Maris and starting something new, I, I, you know, that was really, really good. I was super bummed when he left. I remember the day that he left and I'm like, oh, I hope we work together again. (laughs) Because, um, yeah, it was just such such a good, like, uh, um, you know, engineer and friend to have at Line 6. Um, yeah, he uh, is, uh, um, uh, he, yeah, I, I would have to say uh, one other thing that really impresses me is his troubleshooting skills. Mm-hmm. And I actually, I get excited. If there's a problem and we're trying to figure it out, it's, it's really fun to work on problems with Terry because he'll have, like, another viewpoint it's like oh i didn't think of that it's so good <laughs> and no matter what it is it's fun it's 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 he's he's an excellent problem solver and troubleshooting like so you know if it's you know something in manufacturing or something in our products or something you know it's it's i can always count on him to like have thought of something it's like it's a perfect match it's like okay i, I have i'm thinking of these things and he is like and it's just really fun to go through that process together that sounds um, awesome um, so yeah. it sounds like you guys just have, have a, a, a really perfect working scenario. Um, and what's well, Terry's it, favorite movie? Well, hang on. That's too <laughs> easy. That's too easy. That's too easy. Tony, what about what, where I was going to go with this, if you don't mind, is tell me, uh, tell us rather something that you are surprised that Terry likes music wise. Mm. <sighs> Um, you know, that's going to be really hard because I feel like all of us at the office love everything. Um, that's going to be really tough. I mean, Terry likes everything from, uh, DC punk to metal. Uh, I don't know everything. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think I've ever been surprised a ton of, um, uh, you know, very synth heavy music. I mean, just the gamut, uh, yeah, it's it's hard. I haven't been surprised. Philip Glass, okay. like I mean, just kind of all over. Uh, if you Is, are there any like the office really? with us, you'd hear everything. Really, really, Terry, <laughs> you're gonna uh, play that? <laughs> maybe per- Pearl Jam ten. Okay, <laughs> I'm with you on that. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Um, I, I know Tony wants to hear his answer too. Go ahead, Tony. No, I'm not. Oh, you're not. No. What's what's Terry's favorite movie? <laughs> So uh, I want to say Blade Runner, but I don't know if I can, I don't know if that's, if that's, that's close. the top. That's the top. Uh, that's up there. In the, Terry, in Terry the loves apocalypse movies. Anything where the shit's going down <laughs> 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 and humanity is in jeopardy. That's, I mean, <laughs> Terry's like drawn to that. So Interesting. Um, that, that, that actually kind of that's plays definitely into some the genre sounds that, that come out of some of your stuff. It is, maybe. It is a guilty pleasure. Yeah. Well, uh, my, fa- I, my favorite movie is is Tron. Eighties oh, Tron. Eighties Tron. Okay. But Blade Runner is probably like you know number two or number three. It's Got up it there. You know that's a, that's one of those movies that I had to watch uh, many times, and ne- I, I just couldn't get all the way through it. I was like. I don't get this. It's just, it's not doing anything for me. And then I said, I'm going to try it again. It was probably about maybe two years ago. And I, and it wasn't until the very last thing that record Howard says about the rain. And I'm like, Oh my God, I get it. Oh man. It like that was the improvised. whole thing. Yeah, I know. Right. That's the best part. It's literally the That's best incredible. part of the whole movie. <laughs> and he improvised it. And, and it's, a, it's honestly, it's like, it's like the lights just turned on and I go, I, I totally get this now, completely. It was exciting. I'm waiting until Blade Runner yeah. the musical hits. <laughs> right. Well, there's a TV series coming out, oh, 2099 that's... Blade Runner TV series. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, my, I'm holding my breath for that. 2049 was good. Yeah. Um, and my kids love 2049 better than the original. I, w- I, I think the original like just destroys it music-wise. Yeah. In kind of every dimension, you know. 
but there is, you know, it's it's the same thing with everything. There's there's remakes, and there's you know an Alien TV series coming out. Yeah. There's a Blade Runner TV series coming out. So I don't know. Shogun. I hope I hope it's coming out. Oh my god! I'm <laughs> like, is that Shogun the musical? Yeah, Shogun the musical. <laughs> oh boy. Anyways, uh, let's get on to the, these awesome things that we've got in front of us. Um, I, you know. You sent us the LVX and the Mercury X, and, um, you know, we were pretty gobsmacked uh, just plugging them in just right out of the gate without fiddling any knobs and just saying, you know, oh, wow, this is impressive uh, stuff. Um, before we get into the impressive stuff, I want to know, you know, there are so many, not, I won't say so many, there are a number of very feature rich comprehensive very well made modulation pedals out there and and you guys have already been part of you know quite a few of those um when you began the creation of these two in particular um what were some of the considerations that you said okay yes we're going to do this and what drove the development into where we landed with these uh, so we had a really clear idea of what we wanted what we wanted to do for a few years, and this one took a long time to make. LVX took uh, close to three years, yeah, at least, at yeah. least, yeah, um, uh, because there's just so much stuff in it. Um, but uh, the the overarching kind of philosophy of LVX was to get the guitar player or the musician or the, you know, synthesis or whatever kind of musician is using it out of the, um, out of the headspace of having preset, uh, delay types, you know, like here's your, here's your analog delay and here's your, here's your, um, dotted eighth digital or whatever. And, and like taking that off of the, off of the presets and, and breaking up all the different components that make up a uh, delay sound into, into their own pieces. And so you can mix and match and, and, you know, make any kind of delay type you want, kind of create your own. So that was really the idea to open up the flexibility of the, um, uh, kind of taking, taking a delay pedal uh, under a microscope and, and, um, and letting the user mix and match each, each part of it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, having it be um, kind of a, a, a toolkit to build your uh, dream delay was um, something that you know, yeah, like Terry said, considered from the beginning, it, and and considered for a long time. Like uh, we've we're we're really feel lucky. We've been around for ten years. <laughs> yes, this and is so, our tenth year. And so uh, you know, it's stuff that the three of us and uh, have been talking about. For a long time, um, and and shooting around ideas, uh, uh, you know, development is a long process, and it's something that is you know a personal journey, and you know we've thought a lot about every single aspect, about um, I mean on on everything that we've made, it's very kind of you know speaks to our personality and kind of to our heart and things that we love and you know things that inspire us. Um, the uh, LVX and uh, Mercury X, they and uh, they, to me, a uh, part of the concept, at least for joining things together and, and kind of the capability, uh, uh, they, they always, in my mind, kind of went hand in hand together the way that uh, the rack units, the Lexicon 81 and 91 went together. Mm. So the, if you've like messed around with those, they, they're a complementary pair. And that's, you know, kind of um, a little bit of that is, is how LVX and Mercury X work there. They have similar you know, interfaces and control schemes, but they're very complementary. Yeah. I mean, it, that's one of the beautiful parts about these. I think you can recognize right away so that when you have these two together, even by themselves, the, the user interface, um, uh, the hardware and the software being both pretty much identical, it makes the experience much easier to wrap your head around because and I say wrap your head around because these are not like the normal sounds that you typically are hearing. Um, I think what you mentioned about um, creating the, you know, the, the uh, 
the effect that you want. Uh, you said it so much more eloquently than I did. But this really, with that in mind, feels a little bit more like a palette um, rather than something you're just going to, you know, scroll through a bunch of, you know, the standard stuff that, that you're used to, this kind and this kind and this kind and this kind. You really do yeah. get to create whatever you want them to be and that's yeah that's kind of exciting yeah well i'm glad it comes across like that <laughs> thanks for saying that yeah it's it's something um uh, uh so our, our third partner gina it, she you know spent a lot of time sweating on how to make the interface if she designed kind of the the workflow and sweated the details and on making that an easy experience that could transfer to multiple um different you know jobs and 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 so to have that be connected and easy is 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 another consideration that that we've had too because uh, yeah you don't want something to immediately be a turnoff um menus and screens uh i mean just historically are are terrible yeah. <laughs> you know it can be uh, can be a really limiting you know it, you want to play music you don't want to be you know uh, designing uh, a circuit diagram or something you want to play music so right having it be um accessible and focused i think that's that's another you know thing that's nice is there's there's like a focused mode you know having having uh, uh, you know things just slowly reveal themselves and that that's been something that we've cared about a lot too where there's that initial reaction to one of our uh, pedals and then it kind of over time unveils and kind of it's designed to be that way like unwrapping going through the layers of the onion and discovering more and discovering more and learning more um that's intentional too yeah yeah gina was was super instrumental and in, um like she kept uh so angela and i we designed a pretty ambitious kind of under the hood architecture that that has a lot of components to it so um you know gina like kept pushing the ui to make you know guys you got to make this needs to be easier to use it needs to be easier to use needs to be easier to use um so that it's more accessible so mm -hmm. i uh, yeah so like her uh, contribution to the UI was 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 um, I, I'm super happy with how it turned out because we get comp, uh, kind of compliments pretty often that that it's like surprisingly easy to use for such a for such a um, complicated thing. You, you talked about the you talked about like the the initial response and when you plug it in you, before you even look at it, it's uh, plugged in. You're like, wow, this is this is a, a really killer piece of hardware like the the chassis the knob configuration the way the knobs you know are uh react to touch and and control is, is you're like yep i'm all in so far and then you turn it on and then you see something that is not what you typically expect and you know we, we talked about a lot of uh, or at least brought up many of the predecessors or other things that are out there and the screens and, you know, click, 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 then turn, 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 then click, click, click back and turn, turn, turn and click, click. It's There's a lot of shuffling because you're working in a very limited space. And what I appreciated about this, it, it kind of made me feel like, um, you know, when I was designing websites and stuff uh, it, before... You, we hit the, the responsive website era and when mobile started to take over, we were very much yeah. in a click a menu, go to the next page. Everything was like kind of like sideways and you, yeah. and, and everything was, was page limited. And then out and then all of a sudden everything changed. And now mobile was driving the, the scrolling action and that, changed the way that we use websites like completely yeah and i kind of i was like this feels like that a little bit in that you're not doing the you know left right shuffle to do things it's, yeah it's very much a more of a fluid experience yeah yeah a lot of um i mean kind of the natural inclination of a lot of ui design can be almost like a, a spreadsheet like i'm going down the list yeah yeah <laughs> And so that's something we avoided. Well, that also, when you do something like that, it makes you feel like, well, that's what I have to choose from. But as yeah. we just talked about, no, the idea is to land on something and then do what you want with it. Yeah. 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 Um, now, 
we just talking about this. We haven't really mentioned the orbiting the bubbles and splines. Uh, <laughs> that is the the main interface on this. What exactly w- was the genesis behind that? I mean, beyond what I mean, we've cons- already discussed. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wish we had Gina on here to um, to elaborate on the on that conceptually. But it was, you know, it, it was. Uh, Orbs, and we had a we went around a bunch of different um, uh, we we threw, we kicked around a bunch of different ideas. What I'm trying to say, uh, and this is the one that that she came up with that we eventually settled on, and it it's kind of like as if planets are rotating around a central a central um, star or something, and then and then making that symbolize the different modules. That you're um, that you're editing yeah. at the time, yeah, it's, yeah, it's absolutely, really yeah. That it's yeah, yeah, the constellation of tone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, it's really about focus. So it's about bringing things into the into focus um, one at a time and allowing you to react to it. And and the center, you know, lets you know where you're at. And then the orbiting bubbles kind of let you highlight things one at a time, so that it, uh, you know it's not option overload. You don't see the sea of parameters, and, and then you're like, I don't know where to turn. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. That can be real daunting. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, it is. Because yeah, you're limited absolutely. to a degree. It, the, the, the perception is that you have some limitations, but you really have more than, than you think right at your hands, which is kind of a nice twist. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And things are easy to kind of like favorite and bring to the surface. And, you know, it's really meant to be, you know, an instrument that complements you and like, you know, uh, kind of from the beginning, it's everything is the approach is it, uh, at least the most joy that I get out of using pedals and guitars is when it all connects, you know, it just feels like one instrument and it just reacts to you. It's very re- a reactive experience. Um, that's, that's super important. Uh, as far as the sound goes, I mean, in, it's, it's like, I mean, it's like, oh, it's a reverb and a delay. Okay. Um, I think you've clearly taken time to pull out all the stops and creating, um, an elevated delay and reverb experience. Um, they, they just seem to go beyond what we are used to. Um, how much of that was like, like super intent right up front or did that just evolve i think it's i think it's both uh, i think i think some of it uh was was super intentional and and um a, a lot of times as as we're all working together in the same room um things evolve I'm like naturally you know i hear angelo playing something it's like oh that's cool and or or um, the other way around, you know, if if other us if we're making presets and uh, I, it's always been a goal of ours to to make um, to make a product where somebody plugs into it and then a song comes out because they have that product and because it's because it becomes uh, an instrument part of your part of your rig, you know, that you, mm-hmm. you couldn't have done without without that or if it just inspired a certain sound yeah yeah and and to add to that i would say that um uh it's important for us i mean there's so much great stuff out there there's just like uh, we, we love all of it you know we love all of the classics it's and and what we want to have happen and is, is is intentional is with kind of every single step every you know 500 series module pedal the new lvx and, and mercury x is having things that that didn't didn't exist in this world before you know we we want to add something to it um it's not about um you know cloning something it's about you know what what can we bring uh the the three of us in kind of like our our you know our collective experience bring new things to the table and just have new stuff for um guitar players and keyboard players and and everybody to kind of enjoy um, so yeah, we draw on, on, uh, you know, we're inspired by a lot of classic things, but it's uh, throughout every step, we try to bring something new that's uniquely like our voice, you know, so to expand, you know, because again, I love the classics and I'll never replace them. I, I don't want to just recreate them. I want to have new things available, mm-hmm. um, 
just just to like widen everyone's you know palette to to make you know sounds make music so with that in mind um you've brought a lot of new actual processing elements to the table with these units can you tell us about the approach to that and maybe some of the uh neato things that we may not be noticing that are there that are driving this yeah there's uh uh there's some like i said before the un, un, un you know unwrapping like <laughs> the birthday present kind of like uh, ripping off the layers of the onion we try and like have so all of those different categories i, I would say first off the best I, the best way to get familiarized is just like just run through all the presets there's so many great sounds in there but in the categories there's different categories each category has yeah hidden things that um are, are kind of really fun and surprising uh uh and and uh, yeah, I guess for an example, the one that's coming to mind, it's not going to seem obvious, but, uh, uh, in the preamp section, there's, there's kind of an overdriven preamp and, and it's, uh, it's got a really interesting voicing that allows you to do a lot of cool direct tone. So even though LVX is the delay, you can get some really interesting hybrid, you know, overdriven delay sounds that are, are kind of, you know, and, and you have the choice of, of, of putting that anywhere inside the delay. So there's, there's a lot of really fun stuff to explore um i i use i i use the lvx a lot just direct just guitar lvx uh even the filters so the filters are kind of like have complementary things that way too there's uh you know parametric filters and stuff like that that allow you to highlight uh, because it, just a, a dry guitar tone right off of a pickup is so kind of you know it's, it's dull it doesn't have that life that you get from an amplifier but lvx has the tools compression filtering drive to kind of bring a dry guitar to life and then use that to build, you know, an amazing delay tone around. Some of the things that, um, I, at least in my own professional career that I've learned is that sometimes it's more important to know what you, what you don't want than what you do. What you don't want can often help you better understand what you do actually want instead of just, you know, the world. Um, was did you have any considerations of like we definitely don't want it to be this do this look like this feel like this you stumped him todd yeah that's a tough one i don't think that was like part of our of our process so much about not wanting it to be like something else. Cause I think we had a pretty clear idea from the beginning that it wasn't, it would already wasn't going to be like anything out there. It was, it was, it was going to be, um, it was definitely going to be its own thing. Nobody had ever done like we, like we're pretty, pretty well versed on, on all the music gear that's out there. And, mm -hmm. and um, like Angela said, we were just, we love it. So um, it, we were, it, it was pretty clear that we were making something that hadn't been done before. Um, what did that conversation look like when you guys first started? Like, like, it, it, were you just having a, a burger and said, "Hey, what if we did this?" Or, what? well, I, I remember Terry Terry making a really cool drawing early on. <laughs> I think I, yeah, I drew I drew something like an illustrator, you know, like just just to um, just I just like like kind of expanding on it, it had the same basic shape already as the pedals that we as our smaller pedals, okay. but. Um, but was going to be a, a like a like a bigger, more more um, feature laden kind of kind of uh, platform. And yeah, and it had elements of that build your own like sound. We, like T Terry was clear early on, like okay, it's not just going to have set algorithms. It's going to allow you to connect things together. So that I remember when he showed me that drawing, I'm like, yeah, yeah, let's do that. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, a lot of times we're just we're just um, talking about stuff in, in the office, and it, it comes about. We we're not big on like meetings or yearly planning and stuff like that. We kind of we flow more organically, for better or for worse, in the um, in the uh, kind of product development uh, process. Um, and actually, uh, going back to the the um, the LVX uh, UI, we have a editor that we're going to come out with, uh, for Mac and PC, um, 
pretty soon, probably by the end of the month, hopefully, uh, if we, if we if we get all the beta testing ready, where it's gonna it allows you to to um, you know edit or librarian for that for that project. So that's that's gonna make kind of it clutch. Yeah, that's really yeah, cool. That's that's gonna that's gonna break out all of the all of the controls and parameters on on a on a desktop screen so you can see everything at once. Yeah. I mean, that's super helpful if somebody is quite literally saying, I'm going to build, uh, you know, a house of my own sounds that, uh, is substantial. That that's a, that's a big, um, saver for just efficiency and, and, um, probably, um, getting to know that, uh, all of the little bits and things in there that are available that you might not get just kind of, you know, scrolling through it leisurely. Yeah, you can learn more about the sounds that way for sure. Yeah, yeah, and um, uh, yeah. Gina's been working on that for for almost all of last year, so it's yeah. been a big effort. But oh, um, we're going to be releasing that. Yeah. We're going to be releasing that for free soon. So I think everybody's going to like that. That's awesome. Did you have a specific player in mind uh, as you were developing this? Hmm. Us, I think, yeah. Selfishly, <laughs> I think we do. We we do play. I think selfishly, we do everything for ourselves. I mean, I definitely have. We both definitely have um, favorite players. My favorite guitar player of all time is Andy Summers, um, and I mean, there's lots of others that I love, but he's probably my number one. Wow. Yeah, a big one. A big one for us. Is, well, for me, is Holdsworth. Like, uh, he actually approached everything different. Like, he did everything orthogonal to what everyone else was doing so in his guitar playing in the way he like thought about lead lines in his sound design like he had just piles and piles of processors that he would really do novel things with he made his own speaker load boxes and sold them himself he had custom he custom wound inductors he was a nut so he, he he's a huge inspiration so um uh algorithms in the polymoon are kind of you know have shades of that like multi-rack six rack delays stacked together um and then uh, so he's he's someone i have in mind yeah andy summers for sure uh another big favorite of mine is uh uh zappa uh he he had a really odd approach to guitar but like became super fluid and amazing at it like in the later years like just incredible like shredding in a in a very different way like um very very unique kind of sound and approach to guitar I think all I think all three of those guys, those players too, used effects in uh, in the way that we kind of envisioned our stuff, which was um, like the the songs that they made wouldn't be the same without yeah. without without the effects that they used. Like definitely the Andy Summers like um, yeah, modulation totally. and delay. Yeah. Those police songs wouldn't be walking on the moon. Would, they would sound like yeah, they wouldn't yeah. sound anything yeah, like so. That's kind of that's kind of the the dream. Absolutely, that's awesome. Um, of these, uh, you know, you guys have had these out for a little while now, and obviously, you know, the, the other pedals have been speaking for themselves for a long time. But specifically for these two, what about these have you received the greatest response? So. Honestly, um, greatest response is is I, I think that um, well initially we usually hear uh, I'm kind of embarrassed because I feel like we're really like talking so positively about ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's great. <laughs> sell it, sell it, baby. Initially, <laughs> initially we hear like uh, people plug in and then they're like, "Wow, this thing sounds amazing." Um, so they're kind of surprised. So that's good. Um, but then the next thing we usually hear is, oh, this thing's way easier to use than I thought it would be. So, uh, that's, those are both super satisfying things to hear from, um, from my perspective. And, oh, and, uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, so you got to repeat the question. I kind of got lost. Yeah. What, was it, <laughs> what do you, what have you heard me as far as feedback goes? Oh, oh that's right. That's right. Yeah. 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 Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's always uh, kind of one of the most fun things is when you have something out there is hearing not just what they're saying to you, but what they create. So hearing someone's YouTube clip 
and doing something really interesting with it that they, you know, you just really haven't heard before or that you haven't approached the pedal that way. Um, I mean, I feel that a, a, a lot about, um, you know, the different, you know, artists that we work with and our friends and it's always the, a, a really gratifying thing. It's like, okay, I, I made this. And then you see what someone else creates with it. It's like, oh, that's amazing. I, I didn't play that. That's, that's, I never would have thought of doing that with it. So, um, to me that that's the most, I don't know, I feel, I feel really, you know, grateful and happy to be part of their musical experience. And I'm always amazed at, you know, kind of what creations, uh, you know, just happen with, with, you know, using our gear. There's not too many things that I can think of, at least maybe everybody else collectively can that a allow you to do that and b that you can get that kind of immediate response from where you're able to put something and say, this is a powerful thing. And in its sole intent is to create and then let yeah. people just do that. Just like infinitely as the, that's, that's a really awesome thing. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, it's, it's a humbling thing too. It's like, wow, I got, you know, invited into it, it kind of, it feels like you're in the room with them a little bit sometimes like, wow, like that, you know, that voice, that voice of ours, the three of us is like, wow, I can hear our voice, you know, singing along with them, you know, in their music. So yeah. it's, it's a really, it's a really fun experience. That's super cool. Uh, one last thing, uh, you're on your boxes. Um, you have something I think is, is, is also kind of inspirational. It says more than logic, uniting art and engineering. Uh, oh, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, we, we had this, um, we, we had this idea from the beginning. Um, all of us came from more kind of corporate, uh, company structures. Um, they were all creative, very creative. And we had all awesome mentors, um, that we, uh, like, uh, just think so highly of, but, um, but when we did our own thing, it, it was, we had an idea to, to do something more based, uh, based on art and, and, um, about the art uniting with the engineering side, um, instead of, instead of kind of, I guess, I guess instead of engineering be, being, uh, kind of like a vehicle for delivering a product that, um, somebody envisions it's more about the, um, the artistic side of a product and the engineering side of a product coming together to, to be something more pure, I think like, um, and more real. Yeah. I, I would say that a lot of products, um, or, or, or sometimes products can be approached from that way where it's like, Oh, well, what capability do we have? We're going to build a product around this technical capability and you kind of lose, you feel that when you use a product like that, you lose kind of the, the spark and kind of the joy and the passion of the designers. Uh, I think the, the products that work best encapsulate both those things, art and engineering. It's like, wow, the capability is amazing, but I can really tell something about the people behind this. I can feel, feel the energy, feel kind of their passions and, uh, you know, they, you, you feel that. I and mean, even in something really complicated, I feel that way about the Eventide uh, H3000. Uh, it was made by a super small team of three people and I feel like their fingerprints on it. I can feel like yeah. what they're into, what they're excited about. And, and to me, like that's, you know, it speaks to that merger of like, it's a creative thing. It's a technical thing, but it's also a creative thing. It's, it's, that, it's the combination of the two. I think that was very well spoken. Um, it, as we, Round third and start to head home. Uh, anything else that you would like to share about uh, the pedals in front of us, or um, maybe what what you're starting to work on next? I would say we we are happy, like just just ecstatic to still be able to have our own thing going on ten years after we started it. Absolutely. And, um, and that's that's kind of enough. Yeah, you know, I mean, all of us are really happy working together and making cool stuff. And um, uh, like I said, this this um, 
the new desktop editor that that we're going to release is our first ever software. So we're traditionally Angelo and I are hardware guys, so we always have done hardware products with embedded software inside of them or firmware, I guess you would you would more technically call it. But um, this is our first software, so it's going to be kind of a new inv- adventure in that realm. Total new adventure and uh, lots of new things to discover. But uh, another on, on, on top of that, so editors coming out and firmware releases for LVX and Mercury X. Uh, Mercury X is getting some exciting things. Uh, Mercury X has a, a tremolo that you can use. And right now it's, it's uh, the one that's in there is an opto tremolo. But um, with the new update, you'll have harmonic tremolo, which is way mm-hmm. phasier and kind of like a lumpy, almost univibe thing. And, um, and so it'll have that. It'll have a lot more control for stereo like offset in the tremolo you can do almost a panning with it so there's a, there'll be a spread control that pushes you know you can have it set to zero and, and both sides are, are are you know tremoloing the same way and that's that's an, another thing that is not quite obvious about lvx and mercury x is, is is nearly everything is dual like if you see a compressor there's two one for the left channel one for the right channel you turn on the tremolo it's two tremolos one for the left channel one for the right channel so this new parameter in Mercury X for the tremolo spread will allow you to offset and in phase the channels, and it gives almost a panning type of effect. Um, yeah, lots of fun, um, lots of fun new things that are are happening in, in both of those releases. So, so yeah, plenty of fun things in the near short term. With with this model that you've created, this this sort of uh, format, is there is there a third? Is there like a, a a a drive or something that's mm-hmm. going to follow suit to 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 fall in that family? No, there's there's uh, it's kind of infinite, like the yeah. the amount of, of things that we could do with 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 the uh, the new platform. So we're we're super excited about it. Cool. Yeah, it's really limited by our time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we have so many exciting things. Like, oh, we should do this. Oh man, we gotta do this. We gotta do this one too. Yeah, it's just <laughs> limited. I mean, there's there's you know, we're a small team. Um, and, and, and actually I'm happy for that too. It allows us to, you know, really have a collaborative kind of like uh, connected experience. And even in, in, um, manufacturing, we work with someone local here in our same County. Like if something's going on, I you can hop right on, you know, and, and look and be, be hands on with the creation of everything, the production, yeah. you know, everything. So I think uh, that's something yeah, important to remember, you know, you said small team, it, it, which is. You know, when we had even tied on, it, as consumers, we're like, oh, man, that, you know, their factory must be amazing. And it's like, no, it's just like a couple <laughs> of guys in New Jersey. You totally. Know? And yeah. you're a couple of people in California. And it, yeah, hats off to making something feel like it's made by, you know, a somebody as big as like NASA. Apple or something or yeah. NASA. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. No, it's that's that's a frustrating thing because yeah, you'll get an impression like oh man, there's like 200 of them like uh, I'm not but here's the here's the real deal. If you call our phone line, one of us will pick up and talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> you'll talk to the designers. I mean, and I mean, what company is is like that? But, Press yeah, one will, to talk to super anyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, can you imagine that? Like, can you imagine like I have a problem with my iPhone? I can't figure it out. <laughs> Well, and guess I what? I did you Steve. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, it would be like that. That's crazy. Yeah. All right, I'm going to ask a tough question. This is kind of like uh, picking your favorite kid. But each of you, which is your favorite pedal in the line? Terry. Ooh, my favorite pedal Sophie's right now. Sophie's choice. <laughs> um, my favorite right now is Mercury X. Because even though I don't use that one on my pedal board, dang it! But, um, <laughs> it's 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 um, five it's, on the floor. It, to me, to me, it's the most. Uh, <laughs> to me, right now, it's the most inspiring one for for new ideas that I haven't thought of. I just like plug it, like uh, make a patch. A lot of times, uh, what I do, which I don't know if this is silly or not, but I think of the patch name first, <laughs> and then I and then I and then I try to make the patch based on what that name is. Um, but uh, a lot of the factory presets um, that Angelo made 
uh, I can just I can just play something and oh wow that's cool and 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 so Mercury X right now. Cool. Okay, Angelo. Yeah, yeah, it's that's a tough one. It's a tough one. Um, it kind of switches a lot. I mean, I feel um, Enzo is always close to my heart because it bridges the world of synth and guitar. But right now, in the moment. I'm using LVX the most ah. and I've been using it lately to recreate all of the sounds from Eric Johnson's YouTube. <laughs> so he's got this thing. So Eric Johnson has these videos, a series of videos from saucer studios and they're the most like remarkable videos because you can see exactly how his sounds are built. And so I've been recreating the sounds from those YouTube clips with the LVX. So that's, Lately, that that's that's my my favorite kid. <laughs> that's the first I've heard of that, but that sounds cool. I think we should uh, release those presets. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. Well, guys, thank you so much for your time. We're going to do a little thing right now called "Would You Rather." Uh, when Tony doesn't have cheese in his lungs from his bronchitis, uh, he sounds much more velvety. Um, and typically, Tony, you do this, but uh, I, I'm going to. I this will one. release the reins yes, to. Set, set me up, though. Well, Todd, we're going to hop in the old El Camino out to the West Coast once again. Yes. Driving up the Ventura Boulevard. Yeah. <laughs> the highway. Excellent. And, uh, yeah. Well, you well, find me a walking down the street. You're walking down the down the beach. Yes, you're walking I, down the I'm beach. Walking down the beach, and I, I've been. I'm working hard. I've I've committed myself to making a new pedal, mm. and I'm just. I can't. I can't wrap my head around exactly. I think it can be more than it than, than maybe I'm thinking of, and I may be limiting myself. This all this is making me thirsty. So I swing into a. You know, a coffee shop uh, down in, down, let's say, uh, you know, just down by the beach area. And there's nowhere to sit. You know, these coffee shops are so small there. Mm. And uh, <laughs> so I, we find ourselves and find myself in a, in a coffee shop. There's only two tables and mm. with two chairs at each. And at both of these two tables, there's already somebody sitting there. So I'm going to have to share a table with one of these people. Oh, very uncomfortable. Well, it turns out... <gasps> That lo, lo, and behold, and behold, at table one, we have Vangelis, creator of the oh. Blade Runner score. Mm. Oh, the possibilities. If I could pick his brain, if, if I could convince him to help me design my new pedal with some of the interstellar sounds that he's <laughs> capable of. But I'm not convinced yet. And over on the other side of the room, hard at work with hair falling in his face, like on stage, Johnny Greenwood of Radiohead and also scoring There Will Be Blood, famous for that. Mm -hmm. He's sketching away on his little pad and his hair flopping in front. And I think, ooh, what if I got him to help me create this new pedal? So, would you rather have your new Incredipedal designed, co-designed by Vangelis, the composer of Blade Runner, or Johnny Greenwood, the composer of There Will Be Blood and Radiohead? Okay, we're going to start off with Tanya Bolonsky, Polish sausage eating queen of the <laughs> West. And uh, and then we're going to try Rob and then check out the guys at Maris. All right, Tony. Uh, I'm going to go. I'm going to go with Vangelis. Because it's all Greek to me. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> That's so bad. Ah, yes. But no, actually, <laughs> actually, Chariots of Fire was one of my uh, favorite soundtracks. Okay. Um, so I, I think that uh, in terms of ethereal sounds. Yeah. That might, I think that, that, that would get me there. Okay. That's it. All right. Rob? Hmm. Just because it's the opposite of what Tony said. Of course. Guy from Radiohead. The guy from Radiohead. That uh, guy. That old guy over there. Rob can't commit. Uh, but I just did. He's just, well, you, yeah, but, but not by <laughs> choice. By default. <laughs> Anyways. By default. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, let's see. Terry, how about yourself? 
I have to choose. I mean, I have to choose Vangelis. Uh, I do love that there will be blood soundtrack though. So uh, that's a tough one, but um, but uh, I have to choose Vangelis. Although I'm afraid that he, uh, maybe this is really judgmental, but I feel like he wouldn't be that friendly. <laughs> I'm not sure. Well, especially might be a uh, laugh riot. Who well, knows? especially since he <laughs> died so. in 2022. Yeah. Well, he's yeah, not going to be a lot. Not going to be that funny. It's <laughs> all, it's all, you know, it's all made up. Um. Yeah, well, he probably doesn't have a straight cup. He's probably got one of those ridiculous size like frappes with the whip t- whipping on the top <laughs> or something. <laughs> uh, anyways, okay, yeah, uh, Angela, how about yourself? Yeah, uh, so I think I, I'm absolutely Vangelis. Uh, I think the product would be incredibly hard to use. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know if you've seen this clip. He's got this create. He made someone create for him this like Rubik's cube synth interface where it's a bunch of hieroglyphics moving around like rotating triangles oh. nuts so uh, i think i i would have i would be drawn to his table because he's just a lifelong hero with his use of the cs80 and the lexicon 224 mm. but uh i think it would be a, an incredibly hard product to use now johnny greenwood he is also an inspiration because he uses he, he designs his own pure data and max msp like little patches and uses them on stage yeah he is fearless he uses computer software and he makes the little algorithms himself and uses them in a live performance which is highly living extremely dangerously and twiddles the knobs on on the pedal board too at the same time yes yeah yeah so they're both great but vangelis for me yes okay um i'm gonna go with johnny greenwood um thank you todd that you're welcome. I, I like the idea of somebody possibly approaching a an effect. He's very rhythm and beat oriented. Like those things, like they're, they're, he's not, he doesn't isolate them. Like he thinks of them at the same, in the same, you know, uh, way. And at the same time, at least that's my impression. Um, so I, I think it'd be really interesting to see what, you know, given... Uh, you know, a wide open canvas and my, of course, my brainiac strategic mind to, <laughs> to come up with this pedal uh, that uh, I think it'd be pretty awesome. And weirdly, no, the- probably oddly, funkily analogy too, you know, because... With lots of knobs. He's weird like that. Lots of knobs. Lots of and knobs and micro switches. All kinds of and- stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think there would be anything too simple about that. No. Oh, well, that was, uh, that was a, uh, hopefully a decent one. Um, but we'll see. Maybe we'll tickle the old gray man. I hope so. I hope so. Um, all right. We need to, uh, thank a few people. Yes. And then we need to say adios to Terry Nangelo. Okay. Well, that's right, Todd, because at this point of the show, there's a special group of people we love to thank. These are our executive producers. Now, an executive producer makes this show possible. How do you become one? Easy as pie. Go over to patreon.com forward slash the guitar knobs. Check out a couple different levels in which you can participate. Become a friend, a hero, a sponsor of the podcast. Each level comes with some very nice thank you gifts and opportunities to win wonderful prizes. Oh, yes, we've got giveaways coming up, folks. But beyond that, there's one thing more. You get to have your name right on the thing. That's what I'm going to do right now. So special thanks to these executive producers. Vader in Pedals, John Halverson, Rick Calhoun, Trevor Gunberg, Elad Mizrahi, Mike D., Richard Kendall, James White, Mo Tander Guitars, Bill Gola Guitars, John Esterly from Rare Buzz Effects, Anthony Lathrop, Stefan Lamb, Michael Senchuk, Ken Sayers, Darren Gregory, Tom Brazen, Rusty Sneeden, Ralph Gottschalk from Wonderful Audio Technology. What? Don Kloss, Gregory Randall, Brett Hogarth, Eric Hemmer, Stuart George, Michael Furman, James Bell, James Romer, Cameron Pampas, Trevor Ellenberg, Christopher Logan, and John Sebastian. Excellent, excellent, excellent. wait, Todd, there's more because we have a special group of executive producers. We call them our Grand Poobas. Indeed. These fine folks have a fez to wear upon their head like a chapeau, if you will. And uh, they're the cream of the cream. The tippity top. A number one. Mm -hmm. 
So special, special, special thanks to these grand poobas. Tommy Manasco, Ricardo Guerrera, David Kaminga, Brandon Wound Pickups, Hex Matos, Michio Murakishi, Bob Crouch, Jack Cadian, Sam Jett, Tyler Casey Rines, LSJ Music Company, John Williams, James Pennington, Steve Keys, Cody Foster, Science of Sound, uh, Brian Robison, Jonathan Jerusik from 12th Hour Devices, Corey Nigro, Michael Van Zant. Tim Nowak, Jonathan Daly, Martin Cliff, Sean S. S. David Poe, Billy Spitfire Unlimited, Congregation Gear Demos, Paul Von Eppinger, Scott Sullivan, Great Lakes Guitar Pickups, Matt Hart, Enrico Fernando, Moon Guitars, Adam Johnson, Eric Edwards, David Tyndall, and yes. we have an upgrade this week. Oh, I love it. An executive producer that takes the plunge and becomes a grand pooba. I like it. Anthony Jamalero. Oh, uh, yes. Thank you, Anthony. Yes, we really do appreciate that. You guys keep the show rolling, and we couldn't do it without you. Speaking of people we can't do without is our uh, our guests. They mean yes. a great deal to us. Uh, Terry and Angela, we, we can't thank you enough for sharing your time um, and uh, sharing you know your thoughts and your stories about your product and you know and Maris. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Thanks, guys. Absolutely. And where can people go to get these? Uh, and that may just be in everywhere. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a bunch of dealers around the United States, but uh, Maris.us. Perfect. Where to find us. Perfect. And check out their socials for all kinds of great clips and examples. And uh, and actually, um, you know, Angelo uh, is featured on the two product demos for each of these and those are executed exquisitely a pleasure to watch so check those out on youtube tony where can yeah. people find you head over to pickguardian.com check out some of the wares i have available for sale but by and large what i do is custom work so shoot me an email let me know what you need what you're trying to do and i might have some advice yeah like if you need reverse uh, pickups mm-hmm. jakey lee baby <laughs> uh, rob mad cow amplification on instagram Facebook. If you've got a broken amp, that's take it. it to Rob. If you've got a broken amp, take it to Rob. All right, Ooh, that's your jingle. Wow, that's a that. nice jingle. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you can shoot me an email, Todd at the guitar knobs.com. You can DM me, which is even better, on uh, Instagram at guitar knobs. We'd love to hear your thoughts, uh, your likes. Uh, you can throw rocks at me if you want. Rocks and, for Todd.com. Uh, yes. And um, make sure you check out the Valentinos as you're driving around and you need some good rocking out music, everybody. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we hope you have enjoyed our interview with Maris and Terry and Angelo. We hope you have a fantastic guitar week and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> now okay. we should plug that into one of uh, into you know <laughs> both of them. <laughs> that would be amazing. Yes. <coughs> um, Rob hates everything, uh, but he's a ha- he's, Todd projecting. He's a handsome guy, so we keep him. <laughs> we keep him here. Hello. Oh, hey. hi there. <laughs> Oh, are you guys running uh, running that through the Mercury uh, X or? Mercury X or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what you got to brush your teeth is. Uh, what kind of doctor did you say you were? <laughs> that's like you're in a big room. We are in a big room, actually. Oh. <laughs> um, it's a, that's a sideways compliment, Rob. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Bip bop bow, bitty bip bong, bing bong bow. Rob Chafe. 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 Hello. You know, yeah. we should be, we should have a better result because otherwise it's it's literally going to sound like you guys are in space the whole time. Okay. Which is, I you know, which would be is your, is your optimum oh, cool. idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, What's that's wrong that's with vibe. that? <laughs> <laughs> and away we go. Well, that's it for these knobs. Please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash the guitar knobs visit our website at the guitar knobs.com for all of our past episodes four on the floor blog and other good stuff you can connect with us on social too at our facebook page and share your gear and stories on our facebook group also be sure to check out our instagram at guitar knobs catch you next time